Um, I'm going to quickly go through some slides about IGCSE. Um, IGCSE is a qualification for 16 year olds. Um, it helps prepare them for you know, future life. It's an entrance into A levels in the UK curriculum. Okay, Cambridge itself have been providing these exams for 150 years to nearly a million students worldwide. And they are part of Cambridge University. It's the third section of a four part pathway through the Cambridge system it starts in primary. You're at the end of the lower secondary part. And then we move into this upper secondary where the IGCSE sit. And then hopefully you go on to do the A levels, the fourth section. And that's the section you do prior to going to university. Cambridge IGCSE is the most popular international qualification around the world. And there are over 70 subjects which can be done under their courses. It helps students to be confident, responsible, reflective, innovative and engaged. They're supposed to be fun courses that will lead you into a route towards your university. It's the first stage on that journey. The exams are at the end of year 11. So the courses are two years. And for the majority of the courses, it finishes with just exams. But for some subjects, there are coursework elements. So there might be essays that you have to write and submit or projects that you may have to do. The final grade goes from A star to G, A star being the highest. And that's what we want for most of, well, for all of our students. And it prepares you well to do your A levels. And the very good thing is that this qualification is recognized everywhere in the world. Everyone knows what standard you have to reach to get an IGCSE. So as this student says, Cambridge IGCSE provided me with the challenges I needed to prepare myself for the next stage in life. And this is what it is. It's the first official hurdle that as a student you have to get over. And the better you do, the better you're prepared for the next stage. At Gorky, all of our students will study English language. Now, those students who are very good at English will also do English literature. Everyone does maths. Everyone does science. This is a double award IGCSE, so it's worth two GCSEs. You get at the end of the course, you get two grades. And there's global perspectives. So in all, you do between five and six IGCSEs, depending on your level of English. Our option choices at this moment are geography, history, Spanish and ICT, but we're also looking if we have the students wishing to take it, how we put IGCSE PE in as well. So consider IGCSE PE as the fifth of those four of those option choices. And from those, you choose two, but if you want to do IGCSE PE, that can be added on as an extra. So that would be three GCSEs if you wish to do them. So you'd have to pick two from Geography, History, Spanish ICT, and you can choose an extra of IGCSE PE. G 
during this session, that's an, what we want to do is look at uh, what sort of students, what demands we're going to put on students through the IGCSE course, because that's the really important thing. Cambridge IGCSE is a challenge and it's a challenge for all of our students. And we want to make sure that you are prepared as you possibly can be for this stage. There's also the choices section, which we'll have to follow up with, and you will have to make decisions over which subjects you wish to do. But you'll be supported by Miss Emma in terms of the head of secondary and Miss Rachel in terms of careers guidance over that. Are there any questions? Uh, there is, can Mr. Rustam explain a bit of what he was talking about? Because my... No, thank you. Uh, about questions. Uh, when to start the preparing to test? To test. The, the actual exams are at the end of year 11. Mm -hmm. So what we tend to do is we will tend to prepare students fully by January, maybe February in year 11, in that year. Mm -hmm. But all through the course, we will be preparing them for students, uh, for the exams as well. Lots of teachers will use exam style questions to help support them. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, then what I'll do then is I'll move on to Miss Emma, who's going to talk a little bit more about the types of demands on the students and what we're looking for from them. So Miss Emma, I'll pass to you. Mr. Rob, Mr. Rob, can one of Ms. Emma will explain us, or Mr. Rustam, or somebody will translate? Do you, if you want Mr. Rustam to translate, he can do that. Thank you. Okay, so Ms. Emma, if you could talk about your expectations and mm -hmm. the subject overviews, and Mr. Rustam, if you could do some translation as well. Okay, thanks, Mr. Okay. Rob. Could you pop the next slide on, please? Okay, hello everybody. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what life in year 10 and year 11 is going to look like for you because there is a transition, there is a little bit of a change. Mr. Rustman? В первую очередь я бы хотел рассказать, как именно будет проходить жизнь в классах year 10 и year 11, потому что это переходный период и все будет немножко по-другому. Okay, so our expectations, as you get further up the school, they rise and more is expected of you. So more than anything else, it's important, first of all, that you are at school, that you're attending every lesson, not just physically there, but your mind is engaged in your learning. Поскольку это очень важный период, то очень важна посещаемость, очень важно посещать все уроки, и чтобы вы были там не только физически присутствовали, а, а чтобы вы были вовлечены в процесс, то есть чтобы ваши мысли были сосредоточены на процессе обучения. Okay, there's also a degree of independence that we need from our GCSE students. This is another area of our expectations. So you have to ask questions when you are not sure. And I know that in year nine, a lot of you are very good at asking questions when you're not sure of things, but this needs to continue. And you need to be a lot more reflective about your learning, responding to the feedback that your teachers and your peers are giving you. Здесь также важна составляющая вашего независимого самостоятельного обучения. То есть, если вы... Важно, чтобы вы ответственно подходили к этому вопросу. Если вы, поним... Если вы чего-то не понимаете, ваша ответственность спросить об этом. Да? Важно постоянно думать о том, как проходит обучение, как вы сами справляетесь, чтобы вы могли конструктивно воспринимать обратную связь от учителей и своих сверстников и использовать ее для последующего развития. Okay, you need to make sure that you're organized. 
One of the key and vital um, elements of being successful in your GCSE is organisation. So you need to submit your work on time, not just on time, but making sure that it's to a very good standard as well. And you have to treat every single assignment and assessment as an opportunity. OK, so move away from seeing it as a test and consider it more as an opportunity to, to show what you do know and also to have a look at what you don't know. Очень следующая составляющая это организованность. Чтобы подготовиться к этому экзамену, нужно, можно сказать, повысить уровень своей организованности, нужно выполнять абсолютно все упражнения, сдавать все работы вовремя и воспринимать их не как вещи, которые могут вас так или иначе завалить, а как то, что может помочь вам понять, чего вы не знаете и где нужно углубить свои знания. The last three points of expectation that we have of you is about your independent learning. So this is where you go home, you're no longer in lesson, okay, at the end of the day, and you need to be spending between one and a half to two and a half hours per day outside of the learning environment where you're going through your notes from the lesson, you're going through the lesson coverage, and you're using um, a revision timetable from the beginning of year 10. Year 10 is the start of a two-year journey. So your revision has to start at the beginning of that journey, not at the end. Okay, it's very, very important that we start revising from the beginning. И один из последних пунктов, это он опять касается вашего самостоятельного обучения, когда уроки в школе закончились и учащиеся возвращаются домой, то от полутора до двух с половиной часов каждый день он должен продолжать свое самостоятельное обучение, ориентироваться на школьное расписание, чтобы де делать все домашнее задание в срок. И, и очень важно понимать, что 10-11 класс — это не окончание обучения, это только начало такого двухлетнего путешествия, которое предстоит пройти. Um, oh, it's not on this one. Um, uh, the revision timetable will look, um, it will give direction to every single subject, every evening, things that you need to be doing to revise there. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to begin by talking a little bit about English literature and English language because uh, that's one of the subjects that um, I teach. So just very briefly, um, as Mr. Rob said, their English literature will be for the extension students. It will be for students who are particularly um, good with their English. And we'll cover a range of topics um, within literature and language. So writing, reading, within that, some different genres. And we'll look at what a good answer looks like. So we'll be going through past papers. We'll be looking um, at how exactly we can use the skills that we're learning in lesson and transfer those to good exam results and possible careers for people who are really interested in English education, law and journalism. Should I translate it now? I think so, just briefly, Mr. Rustin. Oh, okay, okay. Мы с вами начали с того, что в этом проверочном расписании для самостоятельной работы для каждого ученика будут даны соответствующие рекомендации, где будет расписано буквально на каждый день, что именно нужно подготовить, чтобы держать темп по программе. Далее мы сами переходим к тем предметам, которые она преподает сама. В данном случае это английский язык и английская литература. Английская литература предназначена для тех, кто показывает значительные успехи в английском языке, она является дополнительным предметом, и на этом уроке можно развивать самые разные навыки и убеждения, отстаивание своего мнения, представление каких-то проектов через прозу, поэзию и так далее. Окей, а на следующем слайде мы будем смотреть на математику, и мисс Мариет будет говорить об этом. Year nine, you will cover all the basics. Can you hear me? In year nine, we've, in year nine, we've covered um, a lot of the, the 
topics that we're going to do in year 10. So you've covered the basics. Year 10, we'll just progress with some uh, more difficult questions and then a few new topics like uh, trigonometry. Um, well, really by taking maths uh, opens a lot of doors for you. You can study almost anything you want. Yeah, you can do anything you want with maths. Uh, the syllabus also creates the opportunity uh, for you to be able to solve problems. Um, it helps with your confidence um, uh, regarding math concepts and methods and skills. Um, and how you communicate and using your mathematical concepts. Что касается математики, то здесь представлено как общие знания, как вы можете видеть, да, общая теория чисел, геометрии, измерения, алгебра. Но кроме того, будут затронуты и такие новые темы, как тригонометрия, вероятность, статистика. И все это направлено на то, чтобы повысить уверенность ученика в его знаниях, чтобы он приобрел новые способы решения задач и хорошо ориентировался во всех математических понятиях. Oh, hello, everyone. So, uh, this is the science curriculum. Basically, I have it outlined here, biology, chemistry, and physics. So, this covers, uh, this is all covered within our coordinated science. So, in our school, we sit coordinated science, which uh, divides the subject into biology, chemistry, and physics, and it's uh, it goes into a lot of detail in the, each of the three disciplines, but uh, it's not overwhelming. And science is an excellent choice. It's uh, in terms of a subject if you were looking to continue it further than GCSE as well. It uh, offers lots of things like the potential to go to medicine, dentistry, psychology, marine biology, forensic sciences, and engineering. There's a long list of topics in each of the uh, in each of the three scientific disciplines, so I'm not going to go uh, uh, I'm not going to go and read them all out, thankfully. But some examples of what we've already looked at this year and gearing up for IGCSE is cells and matter. So it's uh, uh, excellent in terms of life skills you get from it, and uh, it's an all around fun activity when it gets to GCSE as we do a lot more practicals and we uh, do a lot more fun exercises. Uh, все научные дисциплины представлены в нашей школе в качестве предмета такого комбинированного естественного знания, которое сочетает в себе биологию, химию, физику, как вы можете видеть. Но, кроме того, включает uh, и медицинские темы, вот, и морскую биологию, инженерную науку, психологию и так далее. Uh, несмотря на то, что uh, предметов и дисциплин uh, в одном флаконе очень много, uh, Студенты не чувствуют, что этих знаний слишком много, и они не могут воспринять весь этот материал. Все это структурировано таким образом, чтобы каждая область была представлена достаточно, и ученик мог в ней достаточно ориентироваться. Uh, hi, so I'm Miss Oliver. Um, I'm the PE teacher here at Gorky. Loads of the stuff we cover in PE is very similar to what uh, Ms. Christian has mentioned in science. So we do four units, anatomy, physiology, health and fitness, skill acquisition, and then social, cultural and ethical influences. Uh, the 50-50 split between coursework and the exam. Oh, Mr. Sam, I'll stop for you. Sorry, carry on. Здравствуйте, меня зовут мистер Оливер. Я учитель физкультуры в кампусе Горки. Моя дисциплина достаточно сильно связана с предметом мистера Кристиана, как вы видите, предмет делится на четыре части. Анатомия, физиология, здоровье, фитнес, тренировки, физиология и приобретение навыков, социально-культурно-этическое влияние. Окей, uh, 25, you mean uh, it's a, the general score? You have yeah, to get... So you get like 21 out of 25, 22 out of 25. Вот, 50% процентов всего обучения — это тренировки, 50% процентов это сдача различных нормативов и заданий, по итогам которых нужно набрать 25 баллов по данным четырем областям. 
Uh, there are theory lessons and practical lessons, and it's important that you keep organized when you have practical because I can't grade you unless you bring your kit. У нас есть как теоретические, так и практические занятия, и все они структурированы таким образом, чтобы ваш ребенок получил достаточно сформированные навыки. And finally, there are loads of things you can do with PE. For those that go on to do A level, you can do loads of different sporting um, degrees. However, you can do lots of things that aren't necessarily sport related because of the topics that are covered. Uh, you can go into things such as sports psychologists, uh, sports medicine, um, and journalism. There's loads of different things you can do with a PE uh, GCSE. Вот. И, и если говорить об экзамене IGCC, то здесь тоже достаточно большое поле для развития. Вы можете совершенствоваться в том или ином виде спорта, а, а также выбирать смежные дисциплины, такие как спортивная медицина, спортивная психология или журналистика. Um. So global perspectives um, is not going to change an awful lot from what you have been doing so far. Um, you will do in year 10, you'll do another individual essay, but then you will also do a practice group project in year 10, which we haven't done yet in year nine. Um, nothing much changes with the essays. Um, you've already had a go at doing one of the essays, but in year 10, you will do a 1,500 word essay. And then in year 11, we do the same again. So everything really you've been doing in year nine and you will do in year 10, you'll repeat in year 11. It just gets longer and it gets, you know, the expectations go up. Um, there's more attention to detail that you need to be careful of. Um, and obviously you'll be a couple of years older then as well so the maturity in your writing will be there um the exam is uh the full gcse is divided into three so 65 percent of your total gcse mark will come from your group project and your individual project which you will do between about september and march after that, we will focus purely on exam questions, which you've had a little bit of a taste of already. Um, and the exam only counts for 35% of the total mark. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not hard, but it takes effort. And, um, you know, it takes constant um, attention. You need to be working on it constantly in your own time as well as in class. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much global perspectives. The only other thing I can add to that is global perspectives in year 11 could lead to the extended project qualification in year 12. So those of you who do really well at global perspectives in year 11 could have the opportunity to do the EPQ in year 12, which is a 6,000 word essay um, on a subject of your choice but it's a really good tool to have as an extra to your A-levels because it will help with your university application because it will demonstrate a passion for your subject to a university. And if you did do the EPQ, I would be um, making sure that you did something that was relevant to what you want to study at university. Well, uh, Mr. Rustam, I think that's uh, a bit much. Okay, uh, I can translate, it's okay. If you can summarize, that would be good. Okay, okay. Что касается предмета Global Perspectives, в классе ЕРТ мало что изменится. У учеников также будут индивидуальные проекты в виде эссе и групповые проекты. В классе ЕРТ нужно будет написать эссе на 1500 слов и подготовить ряд групповых проектов в ЕРТ. 11, соответственно, будет примерно то же самое. Тоже нужно будет написать эссе, но немного большего размера. И здесь будет э, больше внимания, так скажем, к зрелости изложения, больше внимания к деталям, э, к тому, как и о чем э, пишет ученик. Вот. Э, затем э, в классе ЕР-12 
то есть 2012 год, примерно 65% всего учебного времени будет посвящено групповым проектам примерно с сентября по март на индивидуальном, после чего начинается непосредственная подготовка к экзаменам. И здесь очень важно сохранять организованность и сосредоточенность, внимательно относиться ко всем урокам и посещать их. И потом, если вы сможете написать большое эссе на 6 тысяч слов формата EPQ, это может помочь вам подать заявку на поступление в какой-то из университетов и так, сделает вам хороший задел, покажет вашу увлеченность выбранной областью знаний и готовность развиваться в ней дальше. Fantastic job, Mr. Rustam. Thank you very much for doing that. Uh, if we can keep the other ones a little bit shorter or break in between, then let Mr. Rustam translate. That would be fantastic. Okay, move on to the next one. ICT, which I would talk about. Um, ICT basically covers um, how we use computers and technology in modern society. And it also looks at Microsoft Office applications such as Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint, and producing websites. Такой предмет, как ACT, информационные и коммуникационные технологии, сосредоточен, прежде всего, на использовании указанных технологий. В рамках данного предмета дети учатся пользоваться Microsoft Office, такими программами, как Word, Excel и PowerPoint, и учатся делать собственные сайты. It gives you a really good understanding of the basics around putting or using IT in the world of work, which will support you definitely in any possible career choice that you make. Мы учим детей, как правильно пользоваться информационными технологиями в рабочих целях, поскольку в современном мире информационные технологии абсолютно повсюду, и эти знания точно им пригодятся. Microsoft Office в рамках курса очень грамотно сочетаются практические и теоретические курсы, по итогам которых вы сможете стать очень уверенным пользователем программ Microsoft Office. Okay. Spanish. Hello, everyone. Well, um, Spanish in IGCSE, obviously, it covers the Spanish, the knowledge of the Spanish language. Uh, the topics are divided in, in five, but these are mixed up in the different units, but the exams are divided in these five topics that we have here, everyday activities, personal and social life, the world around us, the world of work, and the international world. And these tasks, these um, topics, they will be the base for the tasks during the IGCSE tests. So you will cover these tasks during the, the topics in, in year 10 and year 11. Что касается экзамена по испанскому языку, то он, прежде всего, подразумевает знания испанского языка. И чтобы подготовиться к нему, мы проходим пять основных тем, на которые, которые как раз и будут рассматриваться в экзамене. Это повседневные занятия, личная общественная жизнь, мир вокруг нас, рабочая деятельность и международное положение, мир во всем его многообразии. По итогам наших занятий мы затрагиваем все эти темы так, чтобы дети были готовы к экзаменам по всем вопросам. Okay. Uh, since these IGCC exams, they will be testing the four uh, language skills, uh, writing, reading, listening, and speaking. We will be using a whole different range of uh, styles and activities during the lessons to cover all these four language skills uh, that include discussing, researching, making projects, uh, writing longer texts, and uh, understanding longer texts. Uh. 
в рамках наших уроков мы будем изучать испанский язык со всех сторон. Дети будут учиться читать, писать, говорить, слушать на этом языке. И для этой цели мы будем использовать самые разные способы занятий, будем делать разные проекты, проводить исследования, читать научные статьи и так далее, чтобы дети были всесторонне подготовлены. And while studying this subject for ITCSEs, we will develop our ability to, to understand longer texts and to be able to produce them, either speaking and uh, writing, and also being aware of different cultures, different nationalities, and different traditions. And as a career, well, uh, there's the specifically uh, the specific career of a linguist that is always there, but uh, knowing an extra language is useful for Uh, every stage in your life for studying in a different country can open you a lot of work, a lot of uh, doors in the future. Также мы будем работать с большими текстами, так чтобы дети могли их писать самостоятельно и читать, понимая их суть. И с этой целью мы будем изучать традиции, обычаи, культуру самых разных стран и Зная еще один иностранный язык, вы получаете возможность раскрыть свой потенциал в самых разных областях, и такие знания открывают вам двери по всему миру. Thank you. Спасибо. Yep. Uh, okay. With the geography IGCSE, much like some of the others, there's very little new information that you would be going to, into. You would simply be going into the existing subject matter in much greater depth, depth. So whether or not it's the population dynamics, the natural world, uh, economic development and economic systems, um, or basic geographical skills, It's exactly the same as what you would have covered in Key Stage 3, which actually many of you didn't actually get the full uh, program, so some things will be new. But um, it's more about exploring these things in greater depth uh, with, with geography over the two years. Um, the skills of a geographer can be quite broad and applied quite broadly. So if you wanted to go into law or sociology or anthropology or those kind of fields, geography can also be a, you know, a good fit for you. Um, and also if you wanted to be involved in primary industries, uh, if you wanted to go and study geology and into oil and gas, primary fields, farming, etc. Kristen. <laughs> okay, so yeah. that's it. <laughs> Удачи. Uh -huh. Что касается географии, uh, то uh, преимущественно в, uh, в Year 10 и в Year 11 темы не изменятся. Мы будем также изучать uh, такие темы, как население, природа, экономическое развитие, экономические системы, а также общие географические знания. Главное отличие будет состоять в том, что мы будем изучать их на более глубоком уровне, узнавать гораздо больше подробностей и деталей, как, как все это устроено, как все это происходит. Uh, география uh, достаточно широко используемый предмет, и с этими знаниями вы можете uh, получить самые разные спе специальности. Вы можете пойти и в юриспруденцию, и в антропологию, в социологию, можете изучать дальше геологию или работать uh, в нефтегазовой сфере. Uh, то есть uh, выбор в данном случае также будет достаточно широкий. Okay, and in the second offer from IGCSE Humanities is history. Uh, the option that we've elected to do at the school is option B, which is 20th century geopolitics. Uh, these topics that you can see listed here are the depth studies, which were done in year 11. In year 10, it's more a general focus on geopolitics through the 20th and early 21st centuries. Um, As they say, uh, those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it. 
whereas those who do study history have to sit by and watch while those who don't repeat it. Um, so, yeah, it's very useful for any career which involves uh, developing an argument and defending that argument. It's one of the joys of history that you can say what you want as long as you can defend it. Um, yeah, so law is a key goal or it's very useful if you want to study law. Um, but yeah, so Rustin. Что касается истории, то uh, year 10, year 11, мы будем преимущественно сосредоточены на геополитике 20 и 21 века. Здесь вы видите ряд тем, которые мы будем изучать. И Первая мировая война, Германия, Россия в начале 20 века и так далее. Uh, одним из главных компонентов uh, изучения истории будет являться... Uh, умение правильно аргументировать и доказывать свою точку зрения, так, чтобы вы ее могли представить и защитить. Это умение будет вам очень полезно, если вы дальше захотите изучать юриспруденцию, но, тем не менее, как есть такая поговорка, те, кто не изучает историю, лишь смотрят, как она, лишь могут только наблюдать за ней, а те, кто ее изучают, могут что-то сделать, чтобы что-то плохое не повторилось, если я правильно все услышал. Thank you, Mr. John. Thank you. Okay, we'll pass over to the careers. Um, it's a really important part of what we do um, to support everybody during IGCSE. So I'm going to pass to Miss Rachel. Okay, so um, the careers is really just what we do at school and what we are, are going to do in the future as they go through from year 10 all the way through to year 13 to support the students um, ultimately with their university applications and getting students into the best university they possibly can get into. And at universities these days, they don't just look at grades. They also want students to have done um, lots of extra extracurricular things. Um, and so at the moment, things like um, assisting with after school clubs or assisting with lunchtime clubs, um, having responsibilities within schools such as house captain or head boy, head girl. Sorry, Rustam, I keep forgetting. <laughs> Окей. Okay. Uh, что касается предмета uh, careers, uh, посвященного дальше профессиональной ориентации, выбору профессии, то uh, он будет продолжаться с year 9 по uh, year 13, по 13 класс включительно, uh, и он будет подразумевать uh, необходимость большого количества внеклассного обучения, uh, таких проектов, uh, как uh, участие в школьных кружках и клубах после уроков или которые будут проходить во время обеда, занимание таких должностей, как head boy или head girl, которые формируют такое детское правительство школы, для того, чтобы на протяжении этого времени была возможность определиться с тем, в какой сфере именно хочет реализовать себя ученик и какой университет будет самым лучшим для достижение этой цели. Um, and so there were lots of other things. I know um, most of the year nines already had signed up for the first aid course, which we offered to them because we had low numbers. Um, that will happen as soon as we come back in September. So um, Varia, I know you weren't able to sign up before, but hopefully you'll be able to join and to do that in September. So all of these extra little things that we're organizing at school, we cannot force any of the students to do these things, but you really should try and sign up for everything because I know, having spoken to many university admissions officers, that all these extra things that you do um, for your community, to increase your skills, um, show a university what kind of a, what kind of a person you are, um, and these will all help you to get into the best university you can. На данный момент, насколько я знаю, уже достаточно много учеников подписались на эти дополнительные занятия, и мы сможем начать их с сентября. Если не ошибаюсь, Варя тоже уже пыталась 
записаться. С сентября все это будет возможно. И несмотря на то, что это дополнитель, просто дополнительные занятия, затем при поступлении в университет это будет очень важно. Таким Участвуя во всех этих проектах, вы показываете университету свою заинтересованность, свою вовлеченность, и вам будет намного легче поступить, если вы сможете предъявить вот, э, статистику этих дополнительных занятий. Извиняюсь, а какие дополнительные задания? Потому что я не... Занятия. Занятия, да. Uh, what extra courses you mean, Miss Rachel? Включить видео. Extra. The first aid course I was talking about. The first... Ah, but it's... Uh, первая помощь. Uh, first aid, you mean medicine, yeah? Yeah. А, да, например, курс оказания первой помощи. А, так мы же это хотели вроде всем классом, и там больше даже людей. So I think uh, the whole class wanted to sign up for this first aid course. Yes, I know, and and um, Cedra and Anastasia and Alex had already paid for it. It was supposed to happen um, the first week back this term. But obviously we couldn't do it, so we will do it as soon as we can get back to school. The people are just waiting for me to message them. Um, so it will happen. But the main point is that all of these things that I've got on this slide, you know, what we do in year nine with getting you onto Unifrog, extra things in year 12, running clubs, um, you know, doing community service, the first aid course, the summer courses. I know some of you were interested in those in year 12, making sure that you do the IELTS and supporting you with that. None of this can be done all in one year. It has to be a build up year by year of doing extra things and having the evidence for it. So when you write your university application at the beginning of year 13, you have everything you need. Uh, да, насчет записи на курс первой помощи я согласна, и Седра, Анастасия, Александр ну, уже даже оплатили эти курсы, но пока мы не можем, к сожалению, их начать, мы начнем их, как только вернемся в школу. Вот. Что касается заявки на поступление в университет, надо понимать, что все эти курсы вы не можете пройти за один год. Вы начинаете их с year 9 и поступательно год за годом проходите каждый курс. И когда вы оформляете заявку на поступление, вы уже можете предоставить определенный объем полученных дополнительных знаний. Хорошо, спасибо. Окей, okay, I know, you know, thank you, Mr. Rustam, you know, for translating. Hopefully you followed that information. I will make this presentation available to you. Um, if you need further information about individual subjects or careers, contact that teacher uh, individually. Данная презентация будет вам доступна. Если вам... Если у вас будут вопросы по какому-то из этих предметов, вы можете связаться с каждым учителем индивидуально и задать свои вопросы. IGCSE is very important. It's a very important time in your life where you will have to work hard and you'll have to be resilient. But with the support of the school, we know you can be successful. Uh... Время подготовки к экзамену IGCC очень важно, и здесь нужно очень усердно трудиться, проявлять настойчивость, и мы, как школа, готовы оказать вам в этом всяческую поддержку. Okay, now I'm just going to pass to Miss Emma. Any final words from you, Miss Emma? Um, no, I just uh, thank you very much for uh, attending and being so attentive with your questions. Um, I'm confident that everybody will leave year nine uh, ready to embark on their IGCSEs and hopefully do very, very well. Спасибо всем большое за внимание, что вы все присутствовали здесь, и я надеюсь, что все мы перейдем из year nine в year ten, будучи готовыми начать новый этап и подготовку к этому важному экзамену. Okay, Miss Rachel wanted just to add something. I just wanted to add one last thing, and that is that, you know, most of you are only 14 years old at the moment. 
nobody expects you to know what you want to do for the rest of your life right now. It's way too early. And even if you thought you knew, you would change your mind 10 times before you go to university. So when you're making your subject choices for year 10, if you have no idea what you want to do in the future, make sure they're as broad as possible. Okay, so that you're covering all your bases now as much as you can. Я сейчас бы хотел обратиться ко всем 13-14-летним ученикам. Если вдруг вы не знаете, чем вы хотите заниматься в будущем, не волнуйтесь, на данный момент вы не должны это знать, вы не должны делать выбор на всю оставшуюся жизнь. Вы еще 10 раз передумаете, измените свое мнение. И когда вы будете выбирать предметы в ER10, помните, что вы можете выбрать самый широкий спектр для того, чтобы вам было легче определиться в последующем. Okay, we're going to move into a Q&A part. Um, Cedra, you've got your hand up. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Robert, uh, we will receive this information on email, this yeah. all of them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. introduction of the uh, uh, here. Yeah, I will post this all to you by email. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? No. Uh, Anastasia, that was a no from you. Cedric, we've heard Alexander. No. no. Uh, we, we all five understood the information, so took it into right. account. Uh -huh. Great. I will, as I said, I will send this so you can look at it slowly. Bavara, anything from you? Yes, Mr. Rob, I have one question. You said that we can choose just two uh proportional like subjects or we can choose more i'll just go back it's a difficult one because we don't know quite where um the e is going to sit there's a possibility to choose at the moment and go back to that slide in here two from this first hmm. group of four Mm -hmm. Plus PE as an extra, so you could end up with three. That's oh, okay. Looking at two from this group. Yeah. Two from this group. Yeah. 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 Remember that everybody, everybody has to do this group as well. Okay, any other questions? Okay, well, if there's no other questions, then we will close this meeting. Thank you for attending. Year nine students and parents, very good to see you here. I will send out this information to you. Um, and thank you in particular to, Ms. to all the teachers for your efforts and putting together this um, slideshow for today. And especially to Mr. Rustam for all the translation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everybody. Um, what we'll do then is I'm going to close the meeting and forward this information to you uh, via an email to a link okay thank you very much again for attending thank you bye bye, bye. thank you bye 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 bye, bye. bye. thank you no.